Uh, here we go. We are live and uh, I can say hello. Welcome uh, back and welcome to our first hangout for the um, Velux EHF Champions League season 2016-17. Uh, it's um, great to be back here. Uh, it's great to um, welcome our guests and uh, well, what better way to start the season than actually talking to uh, one of the um, winners from last season. So. Uh, I uh, very, very welcome Julian Aguinagalde um, from Kjeldse. Hi, Julian, and a warm welcome to Kjeldse. How are you? Hi, thank you. Good, thank you very much. And obviously, you know um, a couple of the faces uh, that have joined today's hangout. Uh, I welcome Nemanja Savic. Hi, Nemanja. Hi, everybody. Uh, I welcome you. Bjorn Partson. Hi, Bjorn. Hello. And um, I welcome uh, a new guest to our Hangout, and I will introduce him straight away as uh, one of the new commentators for Match of the Week, David Brigazzi. Hi, David. How are you? Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody out there. Nice to see you. So, guys, well, um, let's start with last season. Juna, you ended last season. It was basically your goal that was, well, it was your goal that was scored, uh, that was the last of the 2015-16 um, season. How often have you watched? How often have you dreamed? How often have, how often have people talked to you about this penalty? I have dreamed with this situation sometimes, no? Before the situation, but after they did not. I haven't seen uh, a lot of times this this action normally when I win any cup or any medal or something like this you, I usually I don't see the this match no? and I have seen because it was uh, in the newspapers in the YouTube or internet there was a lot of repetition but really I, I haven't seen all the match and only few actions could you could you do it again though if we woke you up at three o'clock in the night would you convert that one penalty as uh, successfully as you converted it about uh, three months ago in Cologne. Sorry, sorry. So could you do it again? If we woke you up at three o'clock in the night, would you convert that penalty again? I don't know. It's it's a dream, no? For us, for for all the club, for for all the players, and I think that it was an incredible moment for for all the people in in Kelsey. Mm. How how much of this do you take into this season now? How much do you feel yourself as like the we are the defending champions and that gives us another 10, 20% of motivation of moral? Sorry, I don't listen good. Eh? It's repeating all the time. <laughs> um, how much, you are the defending champions, how much does that help you? In this I don't listen. It's, the voice is repeating all the time. Two or three voices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you? Can anyone else hear me? Yes. Yes. No yeah, all good. All good. Okay. Well, um, we'll try again. Um, Julian, do you want to? Do you want to leave and join again? Sometimes that helps. If you just like, if you hang up and then just yeah. click on the link. Oh, I put this red telephone <laughs> Can anyone can anyone else repeat this? Just experiencing. Ah, there you go. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> well, we continue this uh, with Arjula, and um, let's let's look ahead. Um, from all of you, when you think about the 2016-17 season, uh, what are the first thoughts that come to your mind in terms of in terms of favourites, in terms of uh, what we are, um, what we can look most forward to, what uh, what can we expect? Bjorn, if you want to start. Yeah, the, the funny thing is when you when you see these groups A and B and uh, the statements of all those top teams who aim to go to Cologne, they, they have one sentence. They say, you have to go to Cologne because when you're in Cologne, everything can happen. Uh, this was grouped by Kielce. So everybody says, when Kielce, how Kielce won last season's uh, trophy, uh, this is the motivation for all the other clubs. So. Um, it's the way that I guess about uh, eight, nine, maybe even ten teams aim to go to Cologne and might have a more or less realistic chance. And uh, they all hope to do a story like Flensburg did in 2014 or Kielce did now in this year. And uh, this is the dream they want to have. And uh, especially when you talk with persons who are involved in the group A, they say this is the toughest, the hardest, the best group ever 
in uh, European club handball. So, of course, uh, I guess some of the favorites are in Group A, but I think we go more in-depth later on. So I say what we take from the last season to the next is that Kielce motivates 10 teams to go to Cologne. Hmm. Um, David, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Uh, your first match of the week is coming up in, uh, in Flensburg and um, give us a bit of insight. Yeah, big, big game, big group, of course, Bjorn is right. I mean, Group A, if you look at the top uh, teams, uh, Vespen, Barcelona, Paris Saint-Germain, I mean, you're right to say anybody um, might go through here, but I mean, we, we have to be honest, there's a certain amount of names that we have in um, European handball where we say, okay, we'll have about 10 teams, uh, you might even reduce it to eight who have a good chance of coming uh, of on to the quarterfinals or whatever. And don't forget that, that um, uh, Flensburg only lost by one goal against Kielce. And Kielce won at the end. So we're talking about one goal, uh, which is nothing in, in handball whatsoever. So I think, yeah, uh, looking at Group A and B, very big. But I think looking forward, um, it's great to see so many good games already in the group stage. That's, that's something I'm really looking forward to, and especially being match of the week this week. I'm looking forward to the game, you know, West Ham against uh, Flensburg. Mm. Um, Nemanja, the, the season, obviously, with the, the final West Ham against Kelce ended in, I mean, such a spectacular fashion. I mean, do you, do you think that uh, the, the upcoming 2016-17 season can actually top this uh, excitement, the suspense, the tension? Well, let me start by saying that uh, every season ahead of the new season, we do this power rankings of, of our own. And um, before Bjorn and I, the article, of course. And uh, this season, it was the most difficult power ranking I had to do. Because, uh, well, as Bjorn has just said, uh, 10 teams have a chance of making it to Cologne. And uh, at least six or maybe even eight of them uh, can be considered favorites for, uh, for making it there. Maybe even, who knows, maybe even the finals, because uh, every, uh, every team is uh, equally contested this season. And uh, you can see that the transfer activity during the summer has uh, set the pace for what's going to happen this season. Vesprem has brought a lot of players and uh, Kielce has uh, actually invested in their team and uh, many, many others. So, um, you, uh, you think this is a clear-cut favorite and nobody is a clear-cut favorite now. And uh, Talking about uh, what kind of pace has it set for uh, for new season since the last, I think that uh, Westrom are all the more determined to uh, to make it finally with the trophy. And um, obviously, Kielce, knowing uh, what Talan Dushibayev is doing over there, they're going to do the utmost to defend the trophy. And uh, you, you simply cannot start by saying that uh, somebody's going to make it there just because they have good players or just because everybody's thinking that uh, the team is stronger. Um, Speaking of, speaking of that, uh, there are teams like uh, Barcelona, who I, at this point, didn't, didn't put at first, uh, first four contenders. And uh, they certainly have the quality and certainly have the certain something to make it flow. And after all, it's Barcelona. Then we got Kiel, then we got Flensburg, and, uh, you know, just the uh, smallest of margins decide. And this season is going to be very interesting. I cannot vouch for the final four to be as interesting as last season, but the entire season is going to be crazy. Mm. Was that better, Julian? Now, can you hear us um, better now? And does it not repeat all yes. over? Again? I think that I understand that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, we were just talking um, about the 2016-17 season, the upcoming one. Um, when you when you think about it, when you think about your your first game in in Brest and Kielce entering the season as the defending champions, is that more of a burden now? Do you have extra motivation? How do you approach this season? Well, we know that uh, we want to rip it, you know, what we didn't make the last season. We know that will be so difficult. Uh, a lot of teams, they will be angry for, for these champions, you know, you know, teams like Best Prem, Paris, or Barcelona, or Bainsburg, Necker, Barnard. There are a lot of very good teams and all of them, and they want to be in the final forum and I win this cup, no? I know that. Now, uh, Saturday, we have the, the first step in Brescia. We know that really so difficult. They are playing in Seja Liga and they have played a lot of very difficult match and they play really good. And we know that will be so difficult for us, no? but we must be so concentrated, uh, concentrated and uh, we want to go uh, match to match. And we know that it's uh, a long way, but uh, we must start 100% from, from the beginning. That's being defending champions help you, or is it is it a burden? 
Oh, sorry, sorry. Being being the defending champions, does that help you, or is it a burden? I don't know. I think that always you must take your motivation for any situation, and if we are now the champions, and I think that uh, for one side it will be difficult for us not to rip it and uh, but i think that we have in this respect and and maybe that and the other teams may different way with us mm. uh, david what do you think does it does it help chelsea being defending champions um or is it a burden for them well i think that that uh, dushabai have always said when you start a new season you start from scratch you start from zero you cannot take on you know having the laurels on your head and saying hey we'll do it again everything starts from zero again they've got to win again on saturday against Brest. it's i i i i think but the thing is for every every team they play against they will give that little bit more because they're playing against kielsa they're playing against the winners of the Champions League. so also kielsa have to give a bit more um Bjorn, um kielsa i mean everyone when you talk about Champions League, I mean, obviously you have uh, groups A, B, C, and D, um, but there is a lot of talk about group um, Group A because it has had, you know, so many big names of European handball in there. Could that be an advantage for for the teams in Group B? You kind of because they can play a tiny bit under the radar because there's so much focus on uh, on Group A. I would say it's a different way around. The disadvantage for the teams in Group B is they definitely will face a team from Group A in the last 16 matches if they're not finished on first or second position. So I don't think that any team of Group B wants to face a team of Group A. So uh, in the end, of course, I guess that Group A is more in the focus. But uh, there are a lot of uh, people also say that um, this, this special situation with a lot of these Zeha teams together with Kielce and Rheinmecker Löwen is also a nice, a nice uh, uh, composition of this group. So I would say that the group A is more in the focus in the group phase, but it will guarantee so when it goes through that uh, the teams ranked three, four, uh, five, and six from group B will face a team from group A. So I don't think that Julian Aguinagalda hopes to finish on the third position, even uh, if it's uh, another team from group A. So uh, I, I would say that. Uh, the teams of Group B, this makes a special competition in Group B uh, to finish on the, on the top positions, not to have a, a last 16 match against Group A. But this is very far ahead. As Julian said, it's a long way. So we're already talking about matches which are in March. So definitely in the group phase, I guess the focus will more be on Group A. Julian, what is, what is your thought on, on your group uh, and the comparison to, to Group A? Are you, you happy with the draw? Or does it not matter to you which teams you face? You know, you have to beat them anyway at some point. I'm not never happy, <laughs> or, or I think that uh, every team it's, it's very good team in, in Group A and Group B. Uh, I think that uh, maybe now uh, there are uh, the best teams in, in the Group A. We will see. You know, we know that there are very good uh, good teams in, in the big group and. I know that that every match will be a final. Uh, this is so long, and and I'm sure that uh, we, it will be very difficult to win in any match, every match. Give us um, give us some insight into your team. Um, how's the team coming together? You've signed a, a new goalkeeper in Filip Ivic. Uh, you've signed uh, a new centre back with uh, Dejan Bombac. Um, Gregor Tkacik retired, so there were a couple of changes. How is Kielce coming together at the moment? I think that we are happy for to be together now because it was an Olympic game in the summer and a lot of players were there. And a lot of other players, we were uh, making preparation here in Kielce, but now I, I think that we are happy that we are together again. We have a, a new players, we must to help them to, to be a part of this of this group uh, earlier. and. Uh, I think that uh, we are now thinking about this uh, Champions League. You know, this is uh, what we have in the in demand, and I think that uh, it's the, our team. It's uh, a lot of person. There was a lot of players that was playing in the last years, but uh, we must have to to new players, and and we know that this will be difficult to, for for all the team. Mm. Nemanja, do you think we will see at least in the in the first part of the season a bit of an Olympic Games um, impact? You know, some 
some teams just a bit of, of suffering who have sent more teams uh, who have sent more players to Rio uh, other teams who hadn't had that many players in Rio maybe um, gaining a bit of an advantage yes I'm sure we will um, because uh, obviously we have the uh, and the players going into match fitness much earlier than, than they should in the season while uh, all the while the other players have stated that their clubs had a normal pre-season running during the course um, however I, I think that uh, well obviously clubs knew that and the coaches knew that and uh, they knew they know how to how to work through it and they know how to work through any potential fatigue that come come to the players um, speaking of the Olympic tournament itself, uh, I think it uh, it kind of maybe has set the pace for the for the teams that uh, didn't make it all the way to the final, maybe made it to the quarterfinals or something. And uh, I think the players, uh, some players, will be much more much more well prepared in the first part of the season. However, the season will have to start and we'll have to see uh, because you know it's uh, it's all about the team and it's all about how uh, how how fast can you adapt the preparation. Um, speaking of the preparation, we obviously have uh, two types of coaches. The Champions League always said that we have the concept coach and we have the improviser coach. The improviser coaches are obviously going to be uh, more uh, more adept to uh, make sure that their team is uh, is ready and their players are well rested. While the concept coaches might have uh, might have a bit of a trouble because they are used to their players being well rested, you know, from the get go. So, uh, as I've said, first match of the season uh, will show, but I think that it will certainly make an impact. Mm. Um, Juna, how important, talking about your, your game against Brest, how important is a good and confident start for you? I think it's very important that last year we, we start losing with second through this competition and at the end we win. Uh, I know that this, there are a lot of things in the group, it's so, so long this, but uh, Obviously, the, being the first match is, is good for for the good atmosphere of the club of, of the team, and I think that will be the first step for for the next uh, other uh, wins too. But we have a lot of respect to Brest. We know we played there last year, and we know how how they are playing, and we know that will be really difficult. Mm. Um, Bjorn, if we if we say that that Kjelsa definitely surprised the the majority of us last year. Which team do you think has the the potential this year, the biggest potential this year to surprise? The interesting fact is uh, those eight teams or ten teams or how many uh, you want uh, who are aiming to go to Cologne cannot be a surprise aiming to go to, go to Cologne. So uh, I would say uh, what I've seen so far, Flensburg is in a really, really good shape. They just beaten Reinecker Löwen very clearly. They beat Melsungen, though, though they're really good. So um, I would say that uh, in the in the previous three years, there was also only Wada who, who did not make it to Cologne even once. It was three times in the in the quarterfinals and three times they missed it. Two times against Jule and Kielce. So maybe Wada is the potential to to go all the way. Or oh, last year Zagreb uh, surprisingly eliminated Reinecker Löwen in the last 16. Maybe even Zagreb is a team that can go again to the to the quarterfinal. But I don't think so. When you say which team can surprise us, maybe we, we have some negative surprises. The team which we expect on top are hurt a little bit or are affected by the Olympic Games. They will not play that. Uh, a uh, strong group phase, so it depends on what stage of the competition we look. So I don't think that any surprise team except Vada has a chance to go to Cologne. But uh, during the season, yeah, we, we saw that a lot of teams which started not so well, like West Brem last year, they only tied in the first match, Kielce lost their first match, Barcelona lost their first match. So it's usually you need some time to start in the, in, in the season. So Maybe we can talk about surprises in our early December last round in this year hangout. Mm. David, you, you're nodding, or do you have a, a yeah, dark yeah. in your no, mind? I just want to make, take up the two points. One for Bjarni's right. At the beginning, it's too early to say now who's going to be in uh, in Cologne next year. It's far too early. And second of all, to the money as well, say. You cannot see looking at looking at uh, Flensburg, for instance, against Rheinecker-Löwen or against uh, Melsungen, that you could say that those players who were in the Olympics were any less fit than the others. You just couldn't see it. You couldn't take out if you didn't know, say, he was at the Olympics and he wasn't. 
They all seem to be already back in action in their own leagues. And I, I think, like Bjorn, it's, it's really too weird to say. We've seen it in the past. The teams have lost and won later on. They need a bit of time to get together uh, to, to, for the pressure of their local, their national leagues and the Champions League as well, playing both of them. And I just think we need a bit of time for that. Mm. Jula, when for yourself, do you do you look at other teams, even those that are not in your group, or do you just like only from your mindset focus on on Kjels and your own performance? Yeah, as we are focus on only in what we must do, and uh, not in all the teams that there are in, in, in our group. We are going step by step. Uh, we are now really focused only in, in the first match. I think that it's, it's the way for, for to be in the next round. And, and we know that it is uh, so long, but uh, if we start uh, with a good uh, match, I think that would be better for us. Mm. How, much, how much time do you spend when you were just looking at, at rest? How much time do you spend at, like analyzing their game? Because there are some players um, that you know do really um, detailed video analysis. Um, How is it for you? Sorry, the Ross is speaking here and I don't listen at it. <laughs> how, how much time do you spend um, for uh, a preparation for a match like the one against Brest? Do you do like a really detailed video analysis also for your for yourself to get a feeling for yourself how they play? Yes, we normally, um, before a uh, Champions League match, we have a Polish League match in, in this week always, but uh, for the beginning of the week we are uh, commenting something and we have always a lot of respect for Polish league play, uh, teams but uh, always I know that uh, our head is in this Champions League and I mean sometimes we speak in training something uh, any detail and any situation about about this match and after uh, I seen in video two or three times in in the week and but I know I think that uh, we know all the players no? Uh, for example, Brest, they have a, a great team. We played with them the, the last year and they have a new good players too. But uh, I think that uh, we must prepare it uh, so good uh, all the all the match. And I know that it's good too. Uh, we, we love to uh, when, when you prepare it, uh, an important match and, and you know how how good you must to play to, to win uh, these matches. Mm. And, and how do you do it for, for yourself personally? Do you have any kind of regime that you follow personally in terms of preparation? No, I, no, I make a normal preparation I like the team and I don't have no superstition, nothing like this. I, I try to, to be professional to, to see uh, what we must do, what we uh, will see in, in, in this match and uh, I think that it's there are a lot of matches and I, I don't make nothing special. Um, David, let's have a look at a bit of uh, match of the week. Uh, coming to Flensburg uh, on on Saturday, obviously match of the week, always a, a special occasion, um, big environment, and also um, two very um, very special teams, I think, uh, meeting in, in this one. Bjorn mentioned the good form of, uh, of Flensburg um, already, and uh, if I look at the, the power ranking that uh, we published, Best uh, uh, from tops it again. So, um, at least in a, in a few journalists' minds, they are the uh, the huge favourites. So, can we expect a, a big gap kind of matching the expectations? Well, yes. I mean, I, I both teams are, of course, in their leagues. They're both first in their leagues. Um, the game against Rhein-Neckar and just to uh, correct maybe a little bit, was that that Vesprem were not brilliant, but Rhein-Neckar Leuven did not have a good game. <laughs> we have to put it that way. It wasn't a great game by Ryan Nicklewood. And so that the fact that Flensburg beat them the week before, they also played against Magdeburg and only won in the last second. So, um, yeah, but the great thing I think about Flensburg is that they haven't had many changes. I think that's a big difference, maybe. One player in, one player out. And they're playing at home in the Flens Arena. Um, uh, but, of course, if you look at the team of, of Vesprem, every player a top star every player looking through the list it's it's quite amazing the amount of players they have and even the players they have on the bench could replace every other player so i really think i'm, I'm very excited and looking forward to a great game on saturday mm. um i go straight back to julian because we are getting a few questions here um on twitter and i can only encourage everyone um obviously uh join the discussion uh on at ehfcl our twitter account 
um, and we'll uh, ask the questions straight away. Um, we've got a user here, um, Andreas B1897, and he asks, uh, Jula, who is the best signing for Kielce this summer? And which player is uh, the biggest loss for your team, in your opinion? Well, repeat at the end, please. What? Okay, we start with the first question. Um, who is the best signing in uh, for Kielce this summer, in your opinion? The best transfer your club made? Uh, I think that all the transfers that are very important. No? I think that now it's uh, injured, for example, Dejan Bombac, but I think that he will be a very good player for us. Uh, Filip Ivic in the goalkeeper too will be very important. Patrick Balcek is a uh, pivot that uh, he will learn a lot and he will be a, a good player, sure. And, and uh, Darko Jukic, I think that he plays uh, really good last year and he will help us a lot. I you know that I can say one of the players that it's, it's the best for us, no? It was transfer. Mm. And uh, which player is uh, the biggest loss? I don't know. I think that all the players, no, there are big loss, no? I know that. Uh, for example, Diego Tachis, he was here for a lot of years. Uh, he has a lot of respect for, for uh, supporters, uh, Dennis Botich, he plays uh, really good uh, in the last season. I think that uh, we play, we win without him uh, the final four, but it was very difficult because he was playing really good. Uh, it's a uh, winner uh, 100%. It's very important for us. Marin Shego, he makes a uh, excellent match the, the last year, and I think that uh, all the people is important. I can say one, one player, one transfer for us on players that we have lost. I think that we are a team and uh, we have an, an important player, but all together we, we make a, a good team. Mm. Nemanja, if I can uh, pass on the question to you and, and just give us a bit of an overview. What, what do you think is the, has been the biggest transfer ahead of this season? Well, the biggest transfer, well, uh, we can speak about the names, but I can speak about the significance to the team. I think Bombas to Kielce is, uh, for me, if uh, if not the most significant, then uh, one of the most significant transfers. Um, obviously, because we know the way he plays and uh, he's uh, actually the quintessential playmaker and you don't have too much of these this types of players in the game. And uh, obviously, Kielce, uh, Kielce needed that kind of player to, to stay competitive, to maybe, when I don't know, try and defend the throne. Um, obviously, Bombac was heart and soul of his previous teams, I guess. And uh, his, uh, his games were nothing short of amazing. And if I, if I may just uh, have a, a little replica to what um, David has said previously about the players in the adaptation period, and I think that it's going to be very important for, for Kielce that they have so much now back with the team after the Olympics in order for, for him to have time with the team because uh, he will be the one pulling the strings. And uh, a lot will, will depend from this form. So, um, well, regardless of what I said previously about, uh, or what I've written previously about the most significant transfers, I think Pombos to Kielce is the one that crosses my mind right now as, uh, as, as very important. Um, David, same, same question for you because I mean I, I like the um, the idea for Nemanja of kind of making a distinction between the significance for a team and and uh, and the name the name itself because a star coming to a team of stars might be different to um, a star coming to a team that hasn't has had so many um, stars before. Name I'd like to mention is Uwe Gensheimer. Uh, of course, going to a team of stars to uh, Paris Saint-Germain, positive for them, but also negative for the Ryan Ekelhoff, and the guy that came from the team from his youth, came up there real, uh, the golden boy of, of, of Ryan Ekelhoff, and I think it's it's a bit of both then, it's a bit negative maybe, nothing against, you know, the replacement now they have, but I think also for Paris Saint-Germain, positive for the for Gensheimer himself, very important for his personality and uh, development of that, but that's outside of the, the handball session. And also maybe a negative point for the right neck of So we've a bit of both there. It's positive for one team and negative for the other. It's not just, I, and I think I'd like to, to make the point that it's not a, a, a group of stars that makes it. It's the team that makes it. And I think that's very important for the, how, and we can't see that yet, how fast a player has been integrated into the team. 
Um, Björn, um, turning the question around for you, which team has suffered the most, so to say, or which team would you say is maybe weaker than it was uh, last season? Yeah, I would say it's like, uh, as, as usual, those teams from uh, from former Yugoslavia. So when you see Zagreb lose top players like Lukas Stepancic and Filip Ivic, uh, Selje lose players like Blas Blagotinček and others. So it's always those, uh, those uh, teams who have very young players, talented players, who are in the spotlight of the Champions League, like last year in Zagreb or in Selje or sometimes in Valenia. And uh, then they play against the top team. They say, wow, what a great player and we sign him. So, for example, when, when you see in the last years what players Selje lost and what players Zagreb lost, with all of them in the squad, they would both be candidates definitely for the quarterfinals. So I would say this is this is the tradition of clubs uh, of those clubs uh, with this talented youth system, uh, but not the the big money like clubs as West Brom, Kielce, Kiel, Barcelona, or PSG have. Uh, that they always uh, will be lose the top player. So I would say next number is uh, Blas Jans from Celje. He will definitely make his last season, unfortunately for Celje, this young guy, because he's a brilliant wing player. But also when you see like. Uh, when you don't look only on the on the names of this season, that Kiel lost a lot of players in the previous years, some to West Brom, now Johan Kaneas to Wada and uh, Aaron Palmason to West Brom and uh, some others, uh, Dominic Klein to Nord. So I would say there are some uh, kind of structured transfers. You see um, that uh, five, six, seven, eight years ago, before Julen went, Julen was the first big international signing of Kielce, I would say. Um, from especially from Spain, and so others said, "Okay, we can win the Champions League with Kielce now. We can win the the Champions League with West Brom now." So it's not only like in previous years they go to Spain, to France, or to Germany. There are other clubs like Vada, like Kielce, like West Brom, which are top addresses in, in European handball now. And so the the direction of transfers has changed to I would say call it South East East. Um. Juna, another uh, question um, for you. You mentioned um, Kago Jukic already, uh, and there's a, a question here on Twitter. Um, what are your thoughts uh, on, on Jukic, and what is your first uh, impression from him? I know that he's a very ambitious player. No? He's young, he, he wants to play in a Champions League in, in Best level team, no, I think he, he want to to win all. Uh, he's really he plays with very happy always. No, I think that his plays it's good for us, and I think that uh, he will learn a lot here. He will be every day uh, best uh, player, and I I'm sure that he will be a very important player for us. Um, David. Um, hinted in his last response, response he hinted the um, the importance of the the coach. I think David, if I interpreted you correctly, that it's not just about the stars, but that there needs to be someone uh, that you know puts them together, forms them as a team, and and, and leads them as well. Um, if you if you define the role of of talent Shabaya for Kielce, how would you describe that, Julia? I think that uh, he knows that uh, the team is the more important. No? We can change a lot of uh, players or have any players and, and go out another one. But I think that the team is the more important. And we know that uh, we we need a, uh, a time for, for these players. No? We know that we must to help them to offer to be part of this group. I think that we must to make all we can and I'm sure that uh, these players uh, will be very important. These new players will be in, in not a lot of time and they will be very important players for, for us. Um, Nemanja, do you think that, that uh, Dushabayev as a coach is, is one big asset, even though there are obviously other big coaching names um, around, but is one big asset Kielce has uh, compared to, to other teams? Well, certainly, yes. Uh, if I may just remind what I said previously about the uh, concept and the improvised coaches in the methods. And we've seen it in the finals because uh, we've seen, obviously, Sabatik, who I uh, admire as a, as, as a coach, as a tactician. But uh, once his system starts falling down, starts so crumbling down, his, uh, he cannot find the right answer at, at a certain point. Uh, while Dushubayev is uh, he's the one to find the uh, 
uh, to find a response to, to any kind of situation. He's, um, he has a, a, certainly has more to him as a, as a coach, as a leader, most of all, a uh, fundamental point of view uh, than, than many, many other coaches. But um, you, simply, you simply can't compare because uh, obviously uh, this is the season when he, uh, when he makes the team around him. And makes uh, the team exactly as he wants it to be, and uh, I think that um, maybe even uh, maybe even the next season after this one, when uh, when uh, the younger Dushibai comes in, uh, will be will be the uh, the best he also will see. Uh, obviously, uh, talent and his playing experience uh, is uh, is enough to have on the on the field because if anyone has been there and seen it, he's the one. So uh, if you if you can uh, group everything that talent Dushibai is, he is the one of the most perfect model coaches that you that you must tell in the game, mm. David. Because because you brought it up, um, if you had to do uh, a coach's power ranking, how would the top three, top five look like? It's a good one. It's a very good one. Top three, top five. I think Dushibaya will see him there. Yulan, I think we we'll have to put Dushibaya in there somewhere. Um. Yeah, it's it's very difficult. I mean, we 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 talked about ten teams, and and ten uh, eight to top teams. So it's difficult for me to say uh, to name exactly three coaches because for players, if we talk about the transfer list that 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 we've seen of some of the players, it's got to do with a the negative point that a player has left the team, b whether this player can be replaced by a player of equal quality, and then it's got to do with the coaches, and we'll, we'll see this once again, it's a bit early, how good a coach is to integrate this player into the team and be whether the playing quality, a, a player can be a very good player, but he might not suit the style a coach wants, or the coach says, oh, he's a great player, but something happened, the chemistry didn't work out between the two. So it would be maybe unfair to say, Oh, pick pick some names of of Franius from Flensburg or, or Sabaté from things. And just say names because we we won't see it yet. We won't see it yet. And I think a very important quality of a coach will be now, recent past and the future, to be able to change in the middle of the game, to be able to change. And I think I have to uh, thumbs up for for Dusha Bayev to be able to do to different uh, uh, systems, and that will be very important in the future, not just to have one system. The money is nodding his head. Thanks very much, the money. Yep. <laughs> um, Bjorn, I'll, um, I'll throw in uh, a question here that um, reached us on Twitter, uh, and it's on, uh, on Paris, uh, Saint-Germain, uh, and the um, Danielle Varish asks, how can a team like uh, PSG even lose? They have the best uh, player possible on every position. So we, we saw it exactly. Julen will remember the match in the semi final in Cologne. And uh, Lukas said, Arusic after the match said, Sorry, but this was my mistake. Uh, you remember that Mikkel Hansen scored eight or nine goals, seven, eight goals in the first half, and then uh, he kept him out of the of the match in the in the crucial part of the second half so they lost that they lost this match so it's really saying what uh, what david said that um 60 top stars are not a team at uh, from from the starting point so but i would say that noka said Ruzic had his second season now and uh, he's in the term of building a team together with stefan also when you talk about paris you should not forget stefan also who's very important also for the coaching so of course they have the best player on every position uh, but they must fit as a team and they have players inside which are absolute team players and they are players uh, which say okay i'm the shooter for for example michael hansen for me is a classical shooter he adapts to the to the tactic they give him but for example a player now comes the group against him he's 100 percent team player he loves to be part of a strong team and he gives all for the team so in the end you need the the kind of glue in the team so this can be said Wuzic, this can be Olson, and uh, I think always the best clue is success. So if you win the matches, then uh, it fits and you see, okay, it works in this uh, composition of the team. Now Abalo is out, some new players will come. So I would say uh, what Talan told me in an interview before the season is uh, that the most important thing you need to have with the team and with the coach is patience. And so we have patience, we have one year patience. Uh, the guys from Qatar had one year patience with Noka Sedaruzic. They will have a second year of patience. So if nothing works this year, maybe it might change. But I would say that 
um, in this constellation with Stefan Olsson and then Lukas Sedarusic. So PSG for me are the top favorites this season. We will later on name our four favorites for going to Cologne, I guess. Thomas like every year. So I would say usually it's not possible for a team like this to lose. But also when you look on football, how can a team like SC Barcelona lose or Real Madrid or Bayern Munich? So it's sport. One wins, one lose. So in the end, it's a little things. You, you have a, a very bad situation one minute before the end and uh, it throws you out of the match. So it can happen. They're not machines. Um, because we have talked um, so much about uh, coaches, um, I just quickly want to uh, change topics and go back to, to Julien because I promised him we would only keep him for half an hour and he's already been with us for 45 minutes. Um, quickly going, Julien, from the club level to the national team level, um, Spain has a new coach. Um, it's just been announced um, two days ago, I think. Are you looking forward to, to working with uh, Jordi Rivera in Spain and the, the upcoming EHF Euro 2018 qualification? I play sometimes with Jordi Rivera. I play with him in, in Vidasoa and, and Leon. And I know that he's a worker of, of handball and I'm sure that he, he will make uh, good uh, work, not only in, in the national team, uh, only in all Spanish handball. No? Uh, we will see what, what he won. I don't know what he won for, for the next competitions, if he wants to change uh, generation. And it's an uh, Olympic uh, game. It's for, for years for Olympic game. We will see what he won, but I'm sure that we must to give him all for, for to work and if he was like he wants, uh, I'm sure that would be good for, for our national team. Um, thank you. Julien, thank you very much for being with us. Um, feel absolutely free to, to stay with us and I will I will still include you, but I just don't want to um, steal more of your time. But it's been, uh, it's been great uh, talking to you. Um, and you may hang up or you may uh, stay with us. But um, as we can see, um, we're just joined by a um, uh, fifth guest today. And um, I welcome my colleague, actually, um, Chris O'Reilly. Uh, hi, Chris. Can you hear us? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me from about two meters away? <laughs> hey, Chris. Yes. And, um, I can say that Chris completes the um, trio of Match of the Week commentators for the 2016-17 season. So David has just been introduced. He will be in Flensburg. Then uh, Tom O'Brenican, obviously, is still in the mix, and he will be the commentator for the second Match of the Week. And then Chris will have his debut as Match of the Week commentator in Saget. And please remind me, Chris, it's Saget against? I think that team, uh, the Polish team, Ah, uh, it's the <laughs> thing. So, uh, <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> so, there you go, Julian, Chris, Chris, Julian. I'm sure you'll see each other again in uh, <laughs> in three weeks' time. Um, David um, and Chris, just because we, you know, take a bit of time now to to introduce uh, the two of you, David, um, you have. Um, done, so to say, uh, a bit of Match of the Week commentating because you were uh, with us at the uh, Final Four two years ago, is that correct? I did the Budapest um, two years ago and three years ago. I was in the Final yeah. Four Women's and I've done a couple of other games as well, right now living against Vada and against Zagreb as well and a few test runs before that. Um, that was my main main work. Okay. Chris, I wasn't actually correct, I think, because you made your debut um, also last season during the um, knockout games just ahead of the last 16 between the group the team from Group A and the Group C and D, didn't you? Exactly, those high-profile CD matches uh, gave me a taste of what's to come, but uh, I'm looking forward to doing it in the arena system, uh, in the big time. <laughs> what, can, what can we expect from you guys, David, if, if, if you want to start? What, um, how would you describe yourself? Um, how do you see how do you see the game? Give us a bit of insight of, of what people can look uh, forward to uh, in terms of your commentary for um, for Saturday. Especially about commentary, or you want to know that I'm good looking and intelligent anyway? Or uh, to... well, we have we, no no no. Hang on, we have the, the good looking and intelligent part we've seen for the past fifty minutes. Okay, commentary. 
Well, I, I, I'd like to have my own style. I'd like to have a bit of both. Um, maybe uh, when the game get ex gets exciting to take part and to give some background information as well about Flensburg and about Vesprem as we go along. Um, but um, I think myself, Tom and Chris are three different individuals and we'll, we'll, we'll find our own style. And um, yes, I'm looking forward to the game. I hope everybody joins us. And then uh, also to get the feedback uh, afterwards to see what, how it went. And, and as I said, the mixture between exciting and information, that's my main two parts. Chris, what, what about you? And how, how difficult will it be for you to um, get your player's mind off the game? Because, I mean, you're still, you're still playing. You're still uh, playing for Ireland. Uh, we might actually see you at the uh, upcoming trophy uh, in the summer next year. Yeah, well, whenever I'm not injured, I, I try to play a bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll try to bring that as well into my commentary. Yeah. It's something that the only way I know handball is, is through playing it, really. Um, and I think that will will come across in the way I see the game and, and I guess it's something to add to it. Uh, as David said, it will develop throughout the season and uh, I'm looking forward to getting it. It will be a, be a real new experience for me. I've, I've had four years working alongside you and the other guys at the EHF uh, behind the computer and uh, it's going to get my voice out there now at last. Hmm. Um, Julian, is that something you could um, imagine doing? And five, six, seven years time, becoming a, a TV commentator, TV expert for handball? Uh, I will have to speak better English, no, I think, for, for this, but... Oh, you could do it in Spain, you could do it in Spain, you know. <laughs> oh, you can, oh, you can come to us. I mean, I think no one would say no if you come to the year. In Poland, too, no, in Poland, too, maybe, but no, I, I think that it will, it will be nice, no, I know that uh, it's to be connected with, with the handle and and I think that will be nice, but I must learn a little bit. <laughs> so, Chris, you could take Jula um, to the side just for talk to Talan to Shibar, say you don't need him for the last five minutes and he could join you. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe if they don't qualify for the final four this year, we can bring him along. <laughs> <laughs> Not suggesting anything, but yeah. <laughs> see. I think, I think Jula, there's a, there's a second career. That's the second career for you in uh, two, two, three, four years' time. I can. Uh, I will put the curriculum there. Yes. <laughs> um, um, match of the week. We've we've talked about. Um, I think it's. Uh, I think it's time. I mean, now the question to: Are you are you are you nervous? And if you are, is is nervous? Being nervous isn't that always a, a good sign ahead of your premiere, David, for for Saturday, Chris, for um, three weeks? A bit of like. No, no, I don't think nervous. Nervous is. I mean, a little bit of nerves are always always good to have, but I think it's more like I'm excited about, um, looking forward to the game, um, and um, yeah, it's, you have to do a lot of preparation work. It's not only the the, the time in the arena itself. I mean, I wish I had the knowledge Bjorn has. I mean, if I had all of his expert statistics. I would, you know, I wouldn't need to do anything. I just read out the list of who's come in, who's got out, how much money they get, and everything else. But um, yeah, I don't know what that guy does out there. You know. but, uh, the most important thing in Flensburg is before the match, go to this Macedonian restaurant and let you tell all the stories about handball in Flensburg from the owner, who's an absolute handball freak. See, that just shows how much information Bjorn has. He even knows where there's a Macedonian restaurant is. Uh, so, I, 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 uh, yeah, as I said, it's my, my, the, the first time for a match of the week, and I'm looking forward to it. And I hope if I don't pronounce all the names exactly right uh, um, on, on the spot that people say, okay, give him a chance, you know, give him a chance. Chris, what about you? I'm just really excited, the same as David, uh, being in second for the first time. And um, I think just being there and experiencing it, uh, not behind the safety of my computer and typing, but actually uh, dealing with it live will be, will be fantastic. And I mean, nerves at the moment, I'm sure they'll come five minutes before the draw, but uh, at the moment, I'm just excited, looking forward. Um, Björn, uh, Nemanja, do you have any tips for restaurants, uh, bars to go to in Seged? Never been there, sorry. 
Uh, I'm literally uh, going to be in second when, uh, when his uh, match of the week is going to be, so uh, I'll keep it a surprise. Uh -huh. I guess something good in second, Shelby Sausage. <laughs> Jolan, have, have you seen anything else from Saget apart from the team hotel when you when you played that? Whenever you went for an away game in Saget? No, good friends, no, nothing for, for today. It was last year that there was playing out of sense there and I can only speak about this. <laughs> Guys, um, End of hangout time is always the time to um, name a couple of teams that reach, or actually a quartet of teams that reach the final four. Um, good tradition, and I can see Bjorn uh, nodding here. Um, so I give him the, um, the green light straight away. Um, and Bjorn, about 10, 11 months uh, out of the final four. We look ahead to the first weekend of June 2017. Which four teams will we see there? Okay, I named two which go definitely, in my opinion, this is Paris and West Brem. Then I would like to take a German joker, if it's either Flensburg or Kiel. And then, to be honest, uh, I make uh, the prediction that, again, Kielce and Wada will play the quarterfinal like every year. So the winner of the quarterfinal, Wada against Kielce, will also go to Cologne. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Nemanja, your picks? Well, okay then. Uh, Vesprom, obviously, uh, followed by Varder, who has to do with this season. Um, uh, PSG, of course, uh, Shield Power. And it's uh, for me, it's either Kielce or Flensburg going there. So it's either no German team or, uh, well, no trophy defense. So. David, what are your picks? Uh, West Brem, Flensburg, Paris Saint-Germain, and Kielze. And Chris, even though you only joined us 10 minutes ago. Well, I always love, love hearing these things when I'm not uh, a part of the Hangout. It's not so fun actually having to do it. Uh, let's say, I guess West Brem, they have to be there. Uh, PSG, Bardar, and Kielze. Just they're gonna, they're gonna beat Barcelona in the quarterfinal. I mean, no German team. German. No German team. Sorry, not this year. <laughs> Although I think I said that last year. So. <laughs> well, I think Julian, that doesn't look too bad for you. I think twice you've been at the final four straight away. Um, twice you either have to beat Flensburg or um, Barter in the quarterfinal. So we will see. It's early season. Um, at this point of time, I can only thank everyone for joining our Hangout. Special thanks to Julian. I did leave you out of the prediction final four again because uh, my experience is that players always say, we'll see what happens, what the season brings. Um, I wish you all the best, um, especially to you, Julian, uh, for the first game in Brest for the entire season. Um, all the best to you guys, all the best uh, to you and David for your first match of the week uh, coming up. Um, Chris, we might go for uh, lunch uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, so, but all the best uh, to you as well, obviously, for your match of the week debut in three weeks' time in Seged. And uh, thanks everyone again for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back uh, probably middle of the group phase with our next season, and then we'll see where the teams we talked about and all the other ones are at. Thank you very much. See you soon. Okay. The rest okay. of your day. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. 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 See you. Take care. Bye.